So this is Sylvanas. Um, I'm going to be so awkward because it's the first time I do this. <laughs> um, so this is how I play her or my thoughts on her. And I've been very successful using her this way. Not to say that there may be other things you can explore, but this is how I view her and her, her talents and whatnot. She's a super good hero. I love her right now. She's in a really good spot. She's good at macro, team fighting. She's got mobility, survivability. So she can be pretty self-sufficient, which is kind of good in Storm League. Um, and also being able to control the macro and the map and whatnot is really good in Storm League as well. So, you know, you couldn't really ask for more in a ranged DPS, in my opinion. And she has really good alts as well and high damage. So, I wish I had... Okay, I can still see the chat. Hold on. Gotta move my notes around here. Okay, so first of all, her trait... Um, I think most people know that it shuts down buildings and mercs and whatnot. But it also... You can see... Yield 25% more damage to enemies with three stacks. So that's pretty important that you want to get your stacks out before, um, you know, you put uh, your dagger out, for example, if you can. Uh, so things that you can do with your D. <laughs> All right, let's go away. Get out of here. You can obviously shut down the towers. But you can also shut down minions and mercs. So one thing you can do is when people are sieging in at you with mercs, you can or a big wave, you can shut it all down while your team clears it. So pretty good, pretty important to be using it defending, not just pushing. And when you're taking camps as well. So if you're lazy and don't feel like dodging them, which I do a lot. You can't just shut down. <laughs> Provided you won't need the, you won't need it soon. Anyways, um, you can also do it when you're diving forts to get kills. Um, so if you were almost gonna kill this Arathas, and this gate was down, I won't put too much into <laughs> recreating the situation. But if this gate was down, and Arathas was retreating behind his fort, you can just shut it down, and then your whole team can dive in and secure the kill. So, pretty valuable tool, the D. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I want to say about D. Or E, it's a pretty valuable tool. Um, you can use it basically just to reposition around fights. You can use it to dive and secure a kill. And you can use it to dive, well, secure kill, kill, yes, but if you dive on top of them and use your mind control, which we can talk about later, you pretty much get a free mind control, as long as it's safe to dive on top of them. Um, but you can also use it to escape. So if I was like here, trying to clear this wave, and all of a sudden I get people collapse on me, I would just put it out that way, and then away I am. You can also kind of bait the team fight too into moving a certain way. Like if you're attacking this guy and then a few people run at you this way and you just do that. Well, now you're on this side of the team fight. They're all there and you're uncontested again. It's just a really powerful tool to move around the battlefield in, ge in general. You can uh, kind of overextend yourself to get some extra damage out and, and get out in that way. It also, very important. Uh, no, you can ask questions going, going through it. You can also dodge a lot of CC because, if you notice, while you're in the air, you are unstoppable, it says over my head. So, if a Zul root is going out on you, right before it hits, you, you go in the air and you're unstoppable in the air and you actually don't get rooted. Same thing with Maiev tethers, pretty important on the Maiev tether too. You can actually just like eat the Maiev tether like, no problem. And then just E out of it. 
and she can't she can't uh, pull you. So very powerful to use the unstoppable aspect of this. That's funny it doesn't tell you in the tooltip that it gives you unstoppable, but anyways, yeah, my have tethers, zul roots, things like that. You can get out of. After rooted, no, it's, it won't work as a wait. No, it doesn't work. Let me, uh... It, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. Give my regards oh! To the endless Excellent. Click, click, clicked white main. <laughs> Have him root me. Root me, not- oh, I should take Malfurion out. Root me! Oh my god. Okay. No, you- you cannot. Uh, yeah. I was pretty- pretty sure that was the case, but we checked! <laughs> it does not cleanse you. It just gives you unstoppable while you're in the air, so you have to time it properly. Uh, you can also dive over walls with it, which is pretty fun and exciting. But uh, yeah, that's it for kind of going over the abilities. I'm gonna get rid of my Malfurion because he's annoying. So now I'm gonna go over the talents. Um, oh, well, okay, W. Spreads when it gets hit. Oh. So, like when you're clearing a wave, this does the closest hero or closest person prioritizing heroes. But your W, you want to hit the middle one, and then when you hit it, it spreads to all of them. So pretty important when you're wave clearing. Do you save Q for after you three stack someone or before, because of the attack speed? Uh, I kind of I will Q when I start auto attacking. Mostly, um, because of the spell power. What do you mean the attack speed? Am I missing something? I'm supposed to be the master of Sylvanas? Am I missing something? <laughs> okay. Oh, Zul clears these, uh, people too quickly. Oh yes, 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 okay. Okay, yeah. But mostly for the spell power. But yes, it would help you get your stacks faster quicker, dude. Uh, cause the spell power is more... Oh, okay, this is what I was gonna say. For talent builds, I find that you want to synergize your 1, 7, and 13. Your 1, 7, and 13 are kind of like your fighting talents, and they should synergize with each other to get the most out of it. Your four is kind of PVE, so uh, this is your wave clear one. If you don't have any other strong wave clear heroes on your team, then you're gonna want to pick this up, unless it's like kind of more uh, or like a two lane map. But maybe you're okay. Kind of use your judgment. You gotta look at your comp and decide if you've got enough wave clear and end the map. Merc Queen, I only take on Hanamura and Volskaya for the big turrets, and on Towers of Doom for the big pumpkins that will do more structure damage. Other than that, Possession is really, really good. Uh, it's really strong because if you... I'm gonna think take out Enemy Hero for now, for this... Bother me. <laughs> Of course. So possession. Choose a talent. Okay, I'm gonna set myself to level twenty and do my first build and then I'll talk about possession in a second. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. The might of the Banshee Queen. Possession, lost soul, mind control, cold embrace. 
Will of the Forsaken and Dark Lady's Call. This build, I guess it would be a W build, is really good at single target. First, well, yeah, first, yeah. And uh, this armor reduction is really powerful, especially if you have like a mage on your team and you want to explode people. This is a really good build because of this armor reduction. Um, and you're gonna, this is a very easy build to, to use. You kind of just hit what is available to you or the, the, the path that your tank is carving for you. And you want to be hitting kind of who the other dam your other damage partner is hitting as well because uh, you're gonna get the most out of your armor reduction. Um, but yeah, I will show you possession really quickly before I show you the damage. So you come down to a lane, and okay, you don't want to possession these guys if they're gonna take tower shots right away. I generally, and then even if you go to objective. Like, even if you're not pushing, and you're like, oh, I gotta join my team now. There's like an extra huge wave that's gonna start doing so much damage to the fort, or to the structures while you're team fighting or whatever. So you go down you go down a lane, you possession, you clear the wave, and then there's an extra big wave. Or if you're pushing, then you have extra damage as well, because minions do so much damage, right? Um, I typically... I'm kind of back and forth about which ones to <laughs> uh, possession. The back ones will die quicker, and if they're in the front, especially the towers are going to kill them right away, but they do do more damage. I would just go with the front minions so that um, your ranger minions, unless you're pushing with them, because then you're shutting down the towers anyways. But you also don't want to possession a minion that has one health, because it's kind of wave clear at the same time. So you might change who you possession based on what the wave looks like, where the wave is, are you planning on pushing with it, and, and whatnot. So, that's possession. Lost soul. It also is going to make you have more sustained damage because you get the CDR. Um, if when you're basically attacking a hero with three stacks, you get CDR on this, and then that means more armor reduction as well. So, And then this gives you the spell power. And the attack speed, so you're getting your CDR more. So see how these three are synergizing with each other? Now, people always ask about level 1s. Percent damage is not going to synergize with your level 13 because it's true damage. The armor reduction doesn't do anything to percent damage. And I've actually done the math on these two. Just don't go this one. I've done the math on these two and the only way it's like... I won't bore you with the math, but the only way this one does more damage if it's like on a full souls Diablo at level... 20 is, has like 9k health and you still only end up doing like an extra 40 damage every three seconds um on a diablo but then you're not getting that same return of investment on the, every other hero so i don't think that you you necessarily get any more like this is just the highest value and it synergizes There could be some cases where you can take this, but I will talk about it after. Some people like it for the slow, but um, it's not going to be more damage. Yeah, that, yeah, Enigma. Some people like it for the slow, uh, but it's not going to be full. It's not going to be more damage. And this one, this build, you've got mind control and uh, hopefully lockdown from your tank or whatever. I just, I don't know. I, I prefer this one. Done. So in this one, you're going to want to get your three stacks and your withering fire and then you put out your W and you can see how fast you get it back. Wait, wait, no, no, that's not that fast. Not that fast. <laughs> like, wait, that was instant. That was instant. <laughs> wait, let me check if there's any other questions. There's no other questions, right? Yeah, possession on spider queen for easy gems. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't talk about converting catapult. If you got three charges, you can do the catapult. Again, it dies really quickly though. If you possession it right away and you haven't cleared the wave, it like dies just to the wave, like immediately. So just be careful when you possession it because you might not get any value out of it. <clears throat> or if it's by towers or anything like that. Yeah, so in my third build, I have the slow. So I'll talk about that after. I just don't think it's worth it with this build. 
So you Q, you get your stacks up, and then you W. And then you W again. So most most range DPS I've gone into try mode a lot will do around 900 damage per second at level 20. I'm listening. With pretty much any build, but this is single target. So when you're picking mind control, you want to make sure that it's in a comp that can actually kill somebody in the time. In the time that you're mind controlling. Otherwise, you can go arrow. Especially if you've got a good wombo as well. You can go arrow. You can also go arrow if you're going to get good value on um, preventing a major alt of the enemy team. Like uh, Deckard Sleep. One of my favorite things to do is, is preemptively science the Deckard Sleep. For example, you have a Diablo on your team, you do a big APOC combo. And then the Deckard on the enemy team was like, oh, I'm going to sleep everybody, disengage. Well, if you silence the Deckard when he's like, <clears throat> <laughs> it'll only put it on a short cooldown, yes, but you've probably gotten your kill from APOC and already won the team fight at that point. Not just off the one kill, but things like that. Um, I got screwed today from a Sylvanas. I didn't get to get my D shield off before I died on Uther. So preventing um, big alts that are going to save your team or like a Oriole Aegis or something is really good to use silence on. Mm, I've seen Sylvanas's, let's say you have a mosh pit and it's your mosh pit, like your friendly mosh pit. You can silence the enemy team so that they can't cancel the mosh. So yeah, silence can have big impacts on team fights and you can use them. You just have to be know how you're going to use them in the team fight so that they're very impactful. You got to think about all the alts that are involved and how the team fight's going to play out. But mind control, I take a lot in Storm League and um, you can follow it up, say like on a taunt or a uh, murder queue. Um, at level 20, you can throw it out pretty much off cooldown because it has a 15 second cooldown. Yeah, 15 second cooldown because of the CDR and it reduces their vision. So you can kind of just use it willy nilly. Hydrate and power pose. <laughs> power pose. Okay. So this is a pretty easy build to use on Sylvanas and very impactful in my opinion. Do not test um, as long as you're hitting the same target your team is. It's pretty It's pretty easy to play. You follow the tank, you hit the same thing that your tank and your other damage are hitting, and usually they die. Or you mind control- oh, he actually walks at me. <laughs> the target dummy ah, ah, walks at me. Um, okay, so we haven't talked about 16s yet. Um, I really like Will of the Forsaken. You can do- you can- do a lot with this talent and um, make a lot of plays. It's like a playmaking talent. When would you take arrow over mind control? Um, yeah, I just I just went over that, and because I want to make this a YouTube video, I, I won't answer it again. If you don't mind, just going back, um, so I don't have to edit it out of the YouTube that I'm explaining it twice. It's in the vod. Um, yeah, okay, so you can outplay people like a Material Judgment or an Illidan Hunt or a Butcher Charge. You can obviously pre-cleanse yourself a Diablo combo, even if it's not an APOC. Um, you can pre-cleanse if a Blaze was trying to charge you. There's lots that you can do with this. Of course. Um, and it also gives you lots of movement speed, so you can chase people down or you can escape. I've used it a lot to do both because it's actually really, really, really fast. So I've chased people down a lot and I've gotten out with like one HP so many times, like way more times than I can count because of this, <laughs> this talent. So yeah, a lot you can do with this. I think that's all I wanted to say about this build, unless there's any questions. Oh. Uh, as for this talent, 
Because you want to check in with your team. You want to think about your team if they have any other armor reduction because it doesn't stack. So if somebody else is taking an armor reduction talent, then maybe this is not the build to go. Because you're kind of um, overlapping at that point and you're kind of wasting your talent. If they are doing that. So I will go over the other build. The third build, but just park that for for one. We'll put a pin in that for one second. So let me. Okay, so let's try a different build. Choose a talent. 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 Okay, so this one is like the haunting wave build, double E, double E build is what I call it. So this one is really good at diving. Like you can dive to secure kills, you're highly mobile, and it's a lot of damage because you get resets on your Q. And you still have the spell power. So again, you can see, so this applies three stacks, and this, um, you get a second haunting wave, and it resets the cooldown of Withering Fire as well. So you're getting the spell power. Um, so you always have your spell power. I'll just show it really quickly. Do not test my patience. You get your spell power, you get your haunting wave. Put that out, you get your haunting wave again. And your withering fire. Um so damage per second again is like always around 900. I think that's like how they balance things for something. Oh, I went a little too early that time. Yeah, around 900. So this this build is actually going to have way more AOE damage too, as you can see. Um, you're going to get three stacks on everybody, and then the dagger is going to spread as well. So it actually is way more AOE. And less single target so if you feel like your comp needs more of that aoe um pressure then this is a good build to take as well also maybe there's like a squishy there and you're gonna have access to it um maybe you have a divey tank or another divey kind of hero on your team that can support you i wouldn't recommend going it if you have like i don't know a johanna and a tychus on your team and you're the only one that can kind of reach the back line maybe harder to work with or if they have lots of CC so you have to be careful with diving as with any dive hero like if there's a bright wing and you go in and then when you're here you get polyed well you can't you're not gonna be able to get back and you're just gonna die <laughs> the Sylvana skin question is actually is actually in um in the VOD <laughs> um so you do have to get very comfortable on when you are allowed to dive. You can't just do it like at the beginning of the team fight when everybody's shit is up and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go kill a squishy by myself because you're still a squishy. You're still a squishy too. So you do have to be careful. So again, you still kind of want to wait for the tank to engage, make sure CC's down and go in to secure a kill. Or uh, maybe after the team fight has already started and there's kind of like a lot of distraction and one of their squishies gets left behind then you can kind of go in especially once you have um bolt as well too it gives you some extra mobility to get out and uh you can also uh silence uh when you go when you go as well before you go onto the target and hopefully they die if it's a squishy yeah like, let's say it was like Chromia at 80% health and she still had, um, what's it called? The ice block. Chromia ice block up. <laughs> you can get the silence out on her too and dive and secure the kill. So yeah, I highly recommend Bolt uh, for level 20 if you're going this build. Like if you don't have mind control, just like a, a lot more extra mobility. You can chase people down. You can... Um, get out really easily, kind of like unstoppable. But I put this one in here. Oh wait, is there a question? Can you use your unstoppable while doing all of that? 
Yes, you could. So that's a uh, that's a, a good point. Something I also want to bring up. If you had Will the Forsaken, and you really wanted to dive, but it wasn't safe, you could go in, pop your Unstoppable right here, and then you're guaranteed going to get out. So another thing you can do with the double E is try not to think of going vertically far away from your team. You could go this way. So you're still by your team. Like, let's say your team was over here. You can go perpendicular so that you're not going too far away from your team. If things go awry. But you're still getting value from all your talents. You get this out. That way, you're still... So let's say... Let's say... You do this, and then all of a sudden happens that you can't go in while you're still safe with your team. And you can put that out for extra damage, and you get your free one. Although you do still have your bolt. You, you would still have your bolt. Or if you don't have your bolt, then you are safe. Just things to think about, you need to know what cooldowns you have up, and what you can get away with. Um, yeah. So... Lots of- oh, back to level 16. I got, I got um, sidetracked there. Life Drain is a good alternative here. Um, it actually heals for quite a bit and will allow you to be a little more aggressive when you dive. Especially if you've got Bolt 2, maybe you don't need this as much. But uh, yeah, it helps you kind of make plays in Storm League. Like I think that this is the build that a lot of people go in Storm League when you really want to carry because you can make a lot of plays and be kind of self-sufficient. So, they... Blaze comes back out. Er... Who should we put out? Well, I'll show you Blaze for a second. I actually want to show all, all builds on Blaze to show you that the percent damage really doesn't make that much of a difference. Oh, uh, that's another thing, like the slow. Slow's really not that great because you're so mobile. Like, you can, like, run people down. Well, he's just gonna stand here and auto me, but... That's kind of the premise of the build right there. Mm. It is a very mana-hungry build. Oh, just to recap for the 16, yeah. Uh, you could use either or. I think this will give you a, a lot more safety. Um, if you're diving. Secure kills on squishies. Is and, um... Whereas the other build, you're kind of... Not out of position as much. If that makes any sense. I think that you, either or could be good. It's kind of like a playstyle thing. I typically just go Will of the Forsaken most of the time, but I might actually start picking this up more, honestly. I used to do it, and then everyone said it's not that great, but it actually is pretty good. And a lot of high-level Sylvanas actually take it. This build... Looks like it has higher D synergy. Yeah, and there's more, there's more spread damage. There is definitely more AoE and spread damage, but if you look at the numbers, it doesn't actually do any more damage. Okay, it will reach, uh, like, it did It did go over a thousand at one point, your DPS. But, you have to take into account the damage reduction on the other build is actually boosting your team too. So it's actually, you know, 25 armor reduction is actually huge and 10 of every, anybody it spreads to so like imagine how much a Kael'thas is going to do extra damage if it's on your team that the extra damage you're doing here maybe doesn't matter it's all uh i think play style but also what your team comp looks like and what your team comp is trying to do are you trying to blow up one target do you need extra aoe to pressure the team it kind of just depends you have to really think about your comp and the enemy comp when picking a build. Do not test my 
Since you queue so much, is the movement speed from evasive fire just meh compared to the rest? I just, I kind of find it meh. Because this one you can control when you need your movement speed. And you also get unstoppable. So I don't... And again, you're already so mobile from like double E and bolt that like, do we really care about the movement speed and the slows? When you can already reposition yourself so much around the battlefield? That's how I think. But I think that some people still take it and it could be viable and it's probably a playstyle thing. So maybe some people like it. I am not a huge, huge fan of it, but maybe in the next build that I'm going to show. Uh, are there any questions? Oh, this, this build is by far the best to take camps with. It will actually take it fast. Um, but it's a pretty mana hungry build too. But camps are pretty dreadful with the other builds. It takes a really long time to get the camps with the other builds. Is there any questions so far? Give me one sec. Okay. I will move on. Is level 20 Withering Barrage not good here? I will be honest, I've never taken it in my life. Withering, I haven't even played around it with it in try mode. Withering Fire also applies. And here's hit by Withering Fire. Ah. Cool. Uh. Untouchable. I don't really see how it would, I mean, you already get your resets from here, right? Like how, how much more do you, how many more withering fires do you need? I guess <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would be a lot of value. I think that the utility of teleport or the reduced cooldown of dark lady's call are the top two, in my opinion, we can triple Q. I'm pretty sure the target's dead by that point. So practice, we're doing a, a how to Sylvanas. Let's see. If, the other talent that I would just never take is this one. I mean, I have taken it. I have taken it when I had a Garrosh on my team and we were isolating one target to kill them. But even then, I, when I was preparing for this, I tried it in try mode and it doesn't. Be, it's not going to do any more damage than taking this. Because this increases the damage too, 10%. The fifth shot does quite a lot, but you're not guaranteed that fifth shot. Fifth shot. It's kind of like rolling the dice. Because if somebody steps in to help them, they kind of just ruined it. <laughs> um, and it just doesn't synergize with this. Or this, because this is untalented. It doesn't synergize with your, your team fight talents at all. There's no synergy. And it's uh, hit or miss. Like it's not. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed value. So I just. I would never take that. Uh, okay. So the last build and one that I can't say that I do very often, and don't think is very popular. To be honest. <laughs> is more of. Uh, we'll try it with the percent damage. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. So it's a, more about this remorseless talent and the percent damage. So you are okay. So they do synergize in the way that you're going to have range. So you're going to get more auto attacks off safely, and um, there is some pretty good splash damage on it actually. So. As you can see, now with three stacks, it starts withering fire, this guy. Um, but it's still... 
It's kind of in between the two, right? It's not as much AoE as the other one, but it's more AoE. Not as much AoE as double E, but it's more AoE than the single target W. You may want to take this into a Garrosh so you have the extra range so you can safely, like an ETC or a Garrosh or an Alarak or things that have like high threat at short range, you may want to take it. Um, and also percent damage is pretty good into Garrosh too. Anybody with armor, Cassia, Garrosh, Uther, percent damage gets more value because, um, because of the armor. But that being said, the armor reduction and the spell power still end up doing more damage than, than percent damage, even if somebody has the armor. Because I did the math too, like on a Cassia or a, a Garrosh. And the spell power with armor reduction is going to still do more damage than... Sorry, I'm going to stop attacking. Still going to do more damage than the percent damage. So the only way I would go this build is if... I mean, you want to be more of an auto attacker and a single single target kind of kind of gal. Um, maybe you're not comfortable with double E. Um, but you really want this basic attack range, then maybe you can go this. And again, it's very, really dependent on the comp the enemy team has and that you have and what you need to fill in your comp. Like if you already have like a huge AOE burst mage, then I would really want to go the armor reduction. Um, that would be my single target. I like, I honestly, I can't see myself going this very often, but I did want to show it just in case it's kind of your play style. It's pretty safe because of the range and it still does good damage and it does have some AOE. So it's kind of like an in-between between the first two that I showed you. Make sense? Is this even kite better than the E build? Thanks for the follow, generic. Um, I guess it would kite better, yeah, because you're getting the slows and you have the range. But look, I'm slowed too. But you st you can still chase people down when I mean, it still has so much mobility no with you know her talents, Bolt of the Storm and E, Unstoppable, Movement Speed, whatnot. I don't think it's that important to be if you're using her her cooldowns right. I don't think it's like. I just don't think that the slow is like really all that important in the range, but I'm not saying it's not viable. It could definitely be viable. But okay, so that's how long it took to kill the blaze there, roughly. Choose a talent. 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 Very well. Like, this is kind of just shredding him, in my opinion. And it's definitely enough to kill a, a squishy. Like, it would kill a squishy faster. Like, the initial burst was quicker. It probably took the same time overall, but the initial burst is quicker here, because that just because of the resets. The other one is just probably better sustained damage. Um, and then we can do... Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. This build. Talent. The first Choose one we went talent. over. But that, that one, I feel like that one was the fastest. Uh, honestly, I think this is my favorite build. It's really easy to use. It does a lot of damage. It boosts your team. Um, you don't have to live dangerously. It works really well, like coordinated, and you've got the utility of mind. Well, mind control. Obviously, there's a lot of utility to uh, a lot of utility to um, silence arrow. But yeah. Yeah. Uh. 
I feel bad because I always pop into the stream with random questions, but I find you're really helpful. Well good, I'm glad. I'm glad that you have questions and that you find me helpful. Is the untalented withering fire from remorseless damage significant? Excellent strike. Yeah, it is pretty significant. I find. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Hero of the storm. Choose a talent. That will suffice. Like it's a hundred every every time I hit him. Hundred. That's pretty good for splash damage. And for level thirteen, I think. Whoa! Exactly, Enigma. The W is, is point click. With that in mind, I have a random question: Do White Man or Deckard gain too much competitive play? Deckard for sure. Deckard has a lot of utility. Uh, White Man less so. She's still a good healer, but she doesn't. Yeah. You can just die of a white man and kill her. She doesn't have Don't. utility. She has really good healing if she's like not pressured, but. The armor reduction is so good, yeah, I know. When are you choosing convert enemy minion talent at four? Um just check the VOD for that, because I did go over level fours. I don't I don't want to repeat just because I'm gonna make this a YouTube video. So, in conclusion, well I can tell you after my conclusion, I guess. I'm concluding this unless there's other other questions. In conclusion, <laughs> she's a super strong hero and I think that it's fun that she has a lot of wiggle room for personal play style um, and a lot of her talents are good again based on personal play style or uh, thinking about what the actual comp is. What, what is your comp trying to fulfill? Is it single target? Do you need that AoE? Can you enhance the damage of your mage? Are you diving? Do you plan on diving or are you gonna kill front to back? Um, so yeah, lots of things to think about when you're building your Sylvanas or which build you're gonna take and if you're gonna vary anything. But like I said, I recommend 1, 7, and 13. You make sure to synergize. Uh, four is your PVE, so it's map dependent and comp dependent. Your 10 is build and comp dependent. Depends what sort of wombo or what you're trying to shut down. Um, and 20, I pick based on what my 10 is. If you have mind control, take the upgrade, otherwise go bolt. Uh, with any hero, I highly encourage not using just a standard build and actually think you should know how to modify your build based on the comps. I think it's very, very important to think about what you're building when you go into a game. And, uh, you know, you have 30 seconds at the beginning of the game to think about it. And, like, think about your talents and what you're going to do so that when you get to a certain talent, you're not like, Oh, what do I want to go? And you're wasting time. <laughs> do you take Wailing upgrade at 20? No. no. I've, uh... I've never taken it, but that doesn't mean it's not viable. I think that some people do take it. So, you can try it and leave it in the comments below, because this, yeah. <laughs> or the comments to the right right now. And uh, see how it works out for you. But I think probably the two and a half, uh, five seconds is a really long, a really long silence. But I think that two and a half seconds could be long enough to get the job done. Five seconds is a very long time. So yeah, that's gonna conclude the Sylvanas video.